Prospecting for gold is nothing more than educated guesswork. Sometimes you guess correctly. Oh yeah. Ah, look at that. And other times you need a mate to tell you where it is. Say what, you leave him alone for two minutes and you end up with treasure. Friends that can do this kind of thing. You just missed a Miyagi a fly out of the air. And obviously it always helps if you can bribe your dog to come along. Do you want to come, Fernie? What if I bribe you? This is gold prospecting. It's been a really long time since I've used the Batea pan, and today I thought we'd take it out to the creek after I reburn it. This one's still hot, but it needs to go back on. <laughs> you burn steel pans originally to burn off any mold release oil, and also adds contrast so you can see the gold on the steel. And lastly, it helps rough up the surface of the pan so the gold sticks. The cool little trick that I've learned over the years is to just coat your steel in a layer of oil before you burn it, and it leaves a nicer color on the steel. See how the oil stained the steel black? That's gonna give any gold that we can see in our pan a nice bit of contrast. Just like that little bit. Now, I wouldn't recommend quenching, but I'm in a rush today, so we, we kind of need to. The problem with the oil method is it'll leave a hydrophobic layer of ash that you have to scrub off before you go to the creek. Using a potato pan means you have to use 100% of your man muscles. Which means fueling with some terrible protein. I can take care of please. Hey, can I please get two bacon and egg McMuffins? Mmm, that's terribly good. The plan is pretty simple. Every time we finish a potato pan, we're going to tip the concentrates into my little mini pan here and do one pan of gold at the end. Yeah, providing I find gold, because I I don't even know at this stage. We're going to have to look. I'm liking this. You can see in high flood, this is all being eroded, and it should theoretically be concentrating in there. What do you think, Bernie? What I didn't know yet was this is going to be one difficult day of prospecting. That's not compacted at all. <laughs> You can really fill a potato pan up. That's five shovels. It's a lot of weight. Don't put too much in. If you've never seen a potato pan in action before, this might look very strange. After spinning it around, these are our concentrates. Now we're gonna find out if there's any gold in them. It's a bit of black sand. By far my favorite bit. This concentrates all the heaviest things at the very point of the pan. Oh, we do have gold, only, only fine, but it's there. Super fine gold, but we got it first pan, so that's a good sign. I kind of like the look of this spot. This looks like bedrock to me. In fact, it feels like bedrock, so maybe if we get some of these rocks out of the way, we'll find more gold. That was loud. I know people are gonna ask me, hey, you're not using any riffles, aren't you losing gold? And the short answer is no. It's really simply, because this pan remains flat the entire time you're using it, and gold is 19 times heavier than water, the gold will sink right down to the very bottom of that point, and it has all the weight of the dirt and the friction from the black sand on top of it, protecting it from any water that comes into the pan. It's actually really hard to stuff that up. Now to try and get some rocks out of the way. Oh, that feels like a good one. Oh, man noises. Ah, sweet, delicious victory, Bernie. Oh, okay. Record breaking rock. You come with me. And then we get uh, the sucking. But then suddenly off camera, Whilst I was yabby pumping, this bright spark here stepped in the pan with my five specks of gold. I know it wasn't much gold, but now we're starting from zero. <laughs> because that's now all that is left of the pan. One, one piece of black sand. Fern, you're lucky, you're cute. We may have lost five, but we gained back three. Slightly disappointing. I'm gonna to have to go for a look. See if I can't find somewhere that's paying out decently. One eternity later. A change of hat and I'm still not finding gold, but Mick is. I'm glad one of us is because they're nice. Finally, I found it again. It has literally been about 35 minutes. But right behind the rock are some golds. They small, but they count. 
scored as a yes but no at the moment. We've got lead and we've got very fine gold. But it is certainly not what we're after. And other than this spectacular Mr. Miyagi moment... Is Mr. Miyagi a fly out of the air? That's pretty much how the rest of the day continued. There you have it. That's it. That's all I got. If I got that one pan, I'd be real happy. I think that goes to show you, it's really not the equipment you use. It's the ground you're working. You could be using the best pan ever made and still come out with 10 specs. I'll show you uh, mine if you show me yours. Yeah, you've done about as well as me, but your lead is way more impressive. <laughs> that's mine. Yeah, you done better. Sometimes that's just the way the cookie crumbles, but there's always the next day and high banking. Today has been, um, difficult. <laughs> See that pump? That is the worst pump in the universe. Isn't it, Gadzi? I use a Keen dry washer. I love my Keen sluice box. Keen makes some really good gear. They made the special attachment that goes on that pump, and it is sh <laughs> it took 45 minutes to prime that thing. Anyway, we're high banking now. Because unlike that thing, this thing is beautiful. I mean genuinely, this high banker is a monster. I can't dig fast enough to keep up with it. And that's exactly what we're doing today because we found gold in sand. Which is like some of the easiest digging ever, yeah? Oh my god. That's such good balancing. Oh, wow. <laughs> Super popular spot on Reedy Creek. We've got some fast water that comes around this bend and it's caused a lot of erosion here. And at this point, we have a lot of very jagged bedrock coming out into the creek that's snagging it. And we've found about 15 specks of pan in the sand that's sitting on top of that bedrock. Finding gold in sand is not common. You need a specific set of circumstances for it to happen, mainly bedrock close to the surface in high velocity water. So this is like one of the little tiny specks that we are getting. There's about half a dozen to a dozen more pieces of flower gold in there. So I know that doesn't look like a whole lot of gold, but because it's in sand, we can throw a shovel after shovel in super fast, and usually that tends to add up. And we want to know what's on the bedrock because when we get closer to the bedrock we tend to get better pans, bigger pieces. And so the shoveling commenced. High bankers are all about moving as much dirt as you physically can. The more dirt you move, the more gold you're likely to end up with. Every second grizzly bar in here isn't attached. It means that when the rocks hit it, it vibrates. That vibration allows for the rocks to open up little gaps to fall through the grizzly bars and it also bounces some of the bigger rocks back. Meaning that you can process dirt faster because it just eats it. This is why I've named it Houdini. It just makes gravel disappear. I really like that we've got a valve on here so we can look in this without having to turn that mother off. Oh, and you better believe that is some thick black sand already. Generally speaking, high bankers are a lot of work, especially one this size, where you'll often need two people just to set it up and operate it. All the extra effort you're putting in, you're hoping to be repaid with in gold. Tell you what, you leave him alone for two minutes and you end up with treasure. He checked the oversize, we've got this massive piece of tourmaline. There is only one guy in the entire world who I know for, without a shadow of a doubt, that all of his chakras are completely aligned. And that's this man over here because he keeps finding crystals. It's gonna be hard to see, but this side here is completely translucent and that continues over the whole surface of this rock. Man, what are you gonna do? Eat it. We've, um, <laughs> we've discovered a tag along. He came out of the bush, now he's one of us. In this high banker, most of the gold accumulates underneath that plate. The problem with that plate is that whilst it catches all of the gold, it doesn't give you any visuals, so sometimes it's very difficult to know how much gold you're actually getting. And it's for that reason that we regularly test pan both the ground that we're digging and our tailings to make sure that we're not losing any gold that we may be putting through the sluice. Is there gold? There's gold. Oh yeah! Little specks! Yeah. 
Do you want to hold on to the bit of lead? Best tip for prospecting. Keep looking. Keep looking. <laughs> yeah, that's what Mick said. <laughs> Both Gadzi and I were blessed with many more secrets from the land clam farmer, some of which we may tell you in the future. A lot of people want to know how to set their sluice angle correctly and the most simple method I can tell you is to look at the biggest rocks that fit through your classifier and how they move down the run. If these scream down the run without pausing, it's too steep or there's too much water. If they sit in the ripples and don't move at all, then you've got not enough angle or not enough water. If they lazily roll down, you're probably somewhere right and it will change depending on what kind of soil you're running. I'm stuffed. I think he's stuffed. The pump's working fine, which is annoying. So I think it might be time to finally do a clean out. Almost 100% of our gold is going to be under this punch plate. The professional undoer. We have one tasty little flaky, and there's another tasty little flaky down in there. And probably, well, we're hoping a whole lot more stuck in this fuzzy blue stuff. Oh my, whoa, that is just pure black sand. High bankers allow you to process a lot of dirt, but processing a lot of dirt creates a lot of concentrates. He comes bearing a big white tub. They call him Tub Man. He appears when you most need a tub. With a tub. How many millions of dollars of gold do we need? Five million. What are we doing with five million dollars of gold? Uh, getting more gold. This is just the blue miner's moss at the top. Underneath that moss is a piece of V-mat that is covered in black sand and gold. And then we've got obviously the whole sluice run to clean out. I'm gonna do all of that at home. That's where you should do all of your cleanups, especially if you're dealing with black sand. But we're gonna have a sneaky look. See if there's $5 million of gold in here. There's a little bit, there's a little bit. There's a lot of very fine gold in there. Like a lot of very fine gold. The hardest thing about working in Reedy Creek is that the tin and gold don't like to separate from each other and it's almost impossible to know in the field when you've got this much black sand how much gold you actually have. It's all through it, but really hard to show you a line of gold. With a saw back and a tub full of concentrates, it was time to head home because the weather was about to get foul. The weather all of this week has been atrocious. Non-stop rain, every creek is completely flooded out and we had one day where I was able to get out. So instead we're gonna do some ore crushing and a couple of other home projects while we've got the time. My rock tumbler can also do, well, Coins. Metal detecting, I found a whole bunch of pre-decimal coins and a lot of them look like this. Completely, completely toast. I can already feel the coin enthusiasts out there screaming, don't clean the coins, you'll devalue them. None of these coins have any value. And I think it'd be really cool to see how shiny and beautiful we can make these coins. So while we do some ore crushing, I'm gonna put these in the tumbler. These are the coins we're gonna be tumbling, and the top coins are what are known as rue pennies here in Australia. And you can see some of them have quite a lot of corrosion on them, a lot of dirt, and some of them are quite brown. These two here are florins, one's quite tarnished and one looks okay with a little bit of corrosion. They're both silver. On the left is a half penny that is absolutely cactus. Then we have an Australian two cent coin. And lastly, we have a very tarnished 1959 sixpence, which is also silver. Plastic beads in there are gonna help prevent any damage from the coins bumping into each other. We add steel shot to the mix, which is gonna help the cleaning process by forcing the polishing compound into any nooks and crannies. Un scoop of polish. Le water. 
That barrel isn't full enough, meaning this machine will run really fast if I start it like this. Over here is what we have polished previously, but we're gonna put them in here to add weight and fill that barrel up. It's the most ominous part, we're gonna check for leaky leaks. No leaky leaks. Power! I'm going to let that run for at least a couple of hours and then we'll just see what they look like. In the meantime, I have this piece of suspected ore. I found this a couple of videos ago sitting outside of a hard rock mine. Now, there is no signal inside this rock, but it has every single indicator I'm looking for. Iron, calcopyrite, quartz, and high, high levels of mineralization. So even though there's no signal in it, there very well could be fine gold. And if there's fine gold in this, it means I can go back to that mine with my RC1 crusher and run a big parcel of ore. I think most of you know Stampy by now. He only has one job and that's stamping. Yeah, all that dust is why I'm wearing this. There's never any guarantee with gold ore, you just gotta crush heaps of it and see what you get. It didn't take too long to get the quartz down to this size, but to take that to that level can be really tedious, so I'm gonna run it through the jaw crusher. This is a manually operated jaw crusher. By actuating these handles here, a set of alternating jaws actuate up and down and pulverize your rock reasonably fine. This unit is designed specifically to do small samples like I'm doing today. Gotta to tighten those jaws up because we've already got the rock quite fine. And then we get our concentrates and we just pour them in. All our rock's gonna come out in that catch tray. It's got a magnet underneath. That magnet removes any steel that comes off the jaws. There you have it, all done. To get that amount of ore in a dolly pot down to this level of fineness would have probably taken me about 15 minutes. But this did it in about three. Oh, this is the best part, seeing if there's any gold in this rock. One tub of mosquito water. My hope for this piece of ore was if there is gold in it, I can go back and process a whole bunch more. You never know with ore crush. One speck. One speck, any? Dead center of frame is a little ball of gold and there's a couple of flecks just above it. Unfortunately, I don't think that's enough gold for me to warrant chasing that vein. So I'm gonna leave that vein be. Now that we've seen what low grade gold ore looks like. Shh. Why we do this, be quiet. Under here. No. Here. No, wait. Yes, this should be high grade gold ore. You may speak. Almost 12 months ago, Fernie and I, along with Mick, went out dry washing. And this is what we ended up collecting. I know I said this was high grade ore, but what we were processing was an old mine dump, the waste rock that had been dug up from deep underground where they were working hard rock deposits. We're gonna crush all of this up and see how much gold we get out of it. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, good morning. Good morning, Michael. This is a lot more rock than the little rock we did before, meaning that that's probably going to be too slow, and it would be ridiculous to try to crush it down in that. Enter the keen RC1. That's going to make light work of this. 100% not wearing a hat and wearing a, um, prolonged device. Choke, petrol. Seconds. Because we were dry washing ore, if we don't crush it, we wouldn't release the gold that may have been trapped in the rock. The dry washer was collecting the heaviest pieces of ore to pass through it, likely containing gold. I have waited almost an entire year for this exact moment, so I'm very interested to know how much gold is going to be in this. With 20 plus gold nuggets that I dug out of this spot, I'd be super surprised if our dry washing hadn't given us anything. I can't remember what we checked all that time ago when we dry washed it, so I'm really hoping we see gold. 
Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> ah, look at that. Yeah, less than half a pan's worth of dirt. Nice. That, my lovely friends, is a beautiful result. Look at that. I'm gonna call that a roaring success. I dare say these should be done. I don't know if seven hours is too much, but we're about to find out what seven hours of tumbling to coins looks like. Look at the silver one. That's real nice. I mean, it's not perfect. We probably could have left these in there for longer, but at least now we know. That other silver one's probably the one that was tarnished. Oh yeah, that's a lot cleaner than what it was. Not perfect, obviously, but comparatively, I think that looks better. That two cent coin down there, that one, I know, was rather um, manky. You couldn't even really read it. Now you can. There's that little sixpence. I believe that one was quite tarnished as well. 1959. That's come up a treat. Also got two more war pennies here that came up excellent. 43 and 41. This one looks really nice. Well, there you go. You can tumble coins and they come out looking better. Seven hours. I thought it would have been a couple, but apparently seven and you need more. While all the gold that we got this week dries in the sun, I wanted to announce the winner of the little nugget. In my last video, I said that I'd be drawing a random subscriber to win this piece of gold that I found in my last video. And the winner of that little nugget is going to be displayed on screen down here, and that is David Cummings. Congratulations, you now own a small piece of Victoria. And one final housekeeping thing, every single month we give away pay dirt that contains gold like this over on Patreon. It costs a whole dollar to get entered, and there are other features such as getting early release videos, and we we also answer patrons questions directly over on Spud Engineering. So if you'd like to be part of that, links in the description. I made a full video on how I cleaned the gold out of the black sand from our high banking session. And that's going to be coming out as a standalone video next episode. So if you'd like to see that, consider hitting the subscribe button. A few nicer chunks that came out of the ore crush and a lot of that beautiful flat reedy creek flaky gold. Scales are all teared off and gold. I'm going to guess one gram. Wah! 1.09! Nice! 1.09 grams of gold is worth 93 Australian dollars at the time of recording. Thank you so much for watching my video. Please give your dog a big scratch behind the ears for me. Until next time, peace! I'm going back to the creek.